<laughs> I know all those folks. So yeah, this morning we've got uh, we've got some wonderful training ideas how how you can make a difference in your business. But first, there's a couple things. I want to say hi to the Quad City offices and uh, Cedar Rapids. Thanks for coming and being online and joining our breakfast. They're actually eating there, so that's kind of that's kind of fun. So enjoy your breakfast. I'd like chew with your mouth closed. So we don't hear you. Um, just say, just saying. <laughs> so anyway, um, we got some sponsors. I went in and introduced. I think they'll have a, a, just a touch to say. Anyway, Heather with with Cinch, and also would you introduce oh. the, the young lady to your right? Uh, I love that you said young. <laughs> Thank you. To me, you know. So this is Jennifer Gandhi. Oh, she's my. Hello. Good nice to see you. I just say team lead. Just a team lead. Heather's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just wanted to real quick um, let everyone know that we released new plans this summer. Here, I'll go this way. Yeah. We released, we released um, new plans this summer. I hit up most of the offices um, to have um, a, a chat about these. So if you've been to one of those meetings, it's, uh, it's new from that. Um, but for those who weren't able to attend that, um, we have really exciting coverage updates on this new plan. Um, we've simplified our terms and conditions, which is something that no other home warranty comes doing within their base plan. So this is included with all of our plans that we offer. Um, essentially, we're um, simplifying our terms and conditions, which is expanding coverage for your homeowners. Um, so it means more coverage, less denials. Um, so it's really exciting what we're doing. And um, we've also have a package plan now called our Buyer Plus plan that includes the washer and dryer and the premier upgrade right in with that base plan uh, for one package uh, cost that's slightly lower than if you would um, do those individually like you had to do previously. And so that's also um, a, a handy, uh, nice plan that I, I think will benefit your clients as well. So, um, and with the market changing, now is a great time to make sure that you're bringing that home warranty conversation back into the uh, picture. Um, I know it wasn't always possible to get those in pri in prior markets, um, but now's a great time. And if you um, have a buyer that's more than 30 days outside of close, they're more than welcome to get seller's coverage in for their, even though they're not the seller, um, to protect their seller. And really what that does too is adds a little bit of coverage um, so, cause we keep that history. And so when they close, we show a month or two of, of coverage already. Um, so it helps with those pre-existing condition issues that need to pop up. Um, so it's a great, great value. And, um, to add that is no additional cost to that year. Um, if you do want to add coverage during the listing period. So if you have any questions, I, feel free to reach out. I do want to say just because I was a former agent for 10 years, put Heather on your phone. Because if you're in the middle of an inspection on a Saturday and you have questions or you're writing an offer and you can't remember what the amount is you want to ask for, if you download her mobile business card, all of that's right there. So it makes it a little bit easier so for you. So if you text H. Valesky, so my last name's um, on the marketing materials we just handed out. But if you text that to 88500, um, we're actually going to do a little giveaway um, at the end of this. So if you just want to do that during the meeting today before everyone leaves, we'll... Uh, <laughs> Text, like, you well, text, text yep, text yeah. H. Valeski, so just her first initial last name to 88500. And I'll send you my link to my digital business card, and then you can just click on the link in it. Um, and then if you click download, it'll save it as a contact in your phone. Um, and then it sends me a notification as well. And so at the end of this, we'll all pick one. We'll pick a random phone random number. person for a cool pocket charger. pocket charger. So for your cell phone, so you never run out of batteries. If you're like Shane, you just sit here with your arms crossed and go, I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, follow that up. <laughs> I like to give away. Uh, so I lose. Um, a lot of pressure. Uh, yeah, uh, Matt's insurance, Todd. Most, most of you know. But uh, one thing I really want to bring up is a lot of these carriers across the the market, independent, captive, all of them are seeing a lot of rate increases right now from previous storms. The one Friday is going to help in the near months. Either. But um, now's the time. You know, your clients are coming to you talking about my home insurance just keeps going up. And up. It's true, they are across the board. 
Uh, now's a good time to shop. Now's a good time to look. So give me a buzz. I'd be happy to help. Now's a good time. Thanks. And Lance, can we add something yeah. to that? Yeah. And so, uh, if, oh, sorry. No. if any of your clients had hail damage from that storm and have a, a cinch warranty, reach out to Heather because you do have they do have a five hundred dollar reimbursement on their homeowners insurance deductible. So it's a good time to reach out. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. No, good, <laughs> stuff. Good, stuff. No, sorry. Right. good stuff. Good stuff. Just yes. Talk to us. Tell us. Uh, Rates are going down, right? Yeah, uh, I, I wish. You know, last week I could have said that. And, uh, Chuck Simmons with Motto Mortgage. Uh, uh, my business partner, Emily, could not be here this morning, um, but we own the Motto Mortgage franchise in Des Moines. A um, couple things. Uh, rates have been on a roller coaster and kind of in a nutshell over what's happened the, the past few months. Um, as the Fed was raising rates to comp inflation, we saw rates going up. Uh, about a month ago, the, the, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but the Fed basically came out and said they had no idea what was going to happen and, and how to not combat it. And so everybody figured there was, you know, they, they just sort of overreacted. So rates started coming back down and actually got down pretty good about three weeks ago. And then just came out this week and um, said that they are going to be more aggressive still uh, in raising rates. So rates are on their way back up. Uh, and as an example, Normal rates will change daily and sometimes more than, than one time a day. I will hands authority. Those rates may change. You know, that's a first time home buyer loan. Those rates maybe change once every two or three weeks. They've gone up every day so far this week. So that just tells me that, that we're going to be back into where rates are going to get up near that 6% range probably. Uh, on convention and you know in that five and a quarter five and a half range uh, for JD. So if you guys have any questions, you can let Emily or I know. Uh, we have an office in Ankeny and Prairie Trail. We have an office up here. Um, but just reach out even if it's a deal we're not working on and you just have a general question, let us know. A lot of people will come to us when a deal dies because we have options uh, to save deals and, and we've been real successful with that. But we love easy deals as well. And so on the easy deals, we can get things closed in about a week and a half, two weeks if we needed to. Uh, and that's typically if we get a, an appraisal waiver, we got investors that can turn things around immediately. So if you've got things that need to close quickly, let us know. We'd love to have the opportunity. And I do have a giveaway, but it's a weekly giveaway. It's my favorite time of year. So football season, uh, we have our pro picks that we do. So for those who are not familiar with it, every week we send out a spreadsheet so people can pick the NFL games. Each office in the Des Moines area, uh, we have a $10 gift card for the one who wins uh, in that office. This year, we are expanding that to the Quad Cities. We are partnering up with the there's a modern mortgage franchise in the Quad Cities, and we are going to partner up with them for this contest and, and do it. And if you're on, you know, in a market where we don't have an originator, but you want to be a part of the contest, uh, reach out, uh, reach out to Lance or somebody and get my contact information, and, and we'll find a way to get your office involved too. So. We'll do it. All right. And there are score sheets upstairs already. So before you leave, if you want to get in for week one, all you have to do is try to pick the winner. You don't even have to know anything about the game. So perfect. Thank you. Uh just some some mentions here. Um, and, and she's getting up and walking, oh, but, <laughs> but creative concepts is doing amazing work out there through the photography and cards and marketing pieces that you do and stuff. So if you haven't, take advantage of creative concepts. They're, they really are good uh, at what they do. Um, they they charge, you know, the, the minimums that you, you know, can charge and still be able to pay for it get by. So something else, we appreciate it. Thank you, you know, sir. Anything that you need to say real, real quick? Nope? Not done, no. I'll be more Perfect. later. Probably Perfect. Next time. Okay. Uh, Concepts Real Estate School, I saw it for a while. I saw that Michelle had was online there for a minute. I don't know if she still is, but uh, but the Concepts Real Estate School, um, there's so many hours, so many classes, so many things that go on. Uh, and, and I know we're getting to that time of year again where <laughs> agents start going, when's my license renewed? <laughs> and so if you're if you're in that scenario, uh, get online. 
concepts real estate school something re concepts re re school when will the cram week be posted <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah cram cram week will come <laughs> and, uh, and, and so I think, first or second, yeah, I think there's enough hours in that week, week and a half that sure. will cover, will cover everything. So, <laughs> Plus, so, we'll have ethics, I so yeah, okay. just just send a message to Michelle. She'll get you. She'll get you taken care of. Match property management. I don't think Scott is in here, or I think he's out. He's out doing business. Well, there's Shane. Shane. <laughs> <laughs> we did. Been trying to find an in-house handyman because we hired two days. Yeah. Yay! Oh. So that will that will help make a make a big difference. And then um, the uh, the real estate service center. She just put that. there. Real estate service center. Somebody. Anyway. Uh, oh, <laughs> they're amazing. Mm -hmm. um, they do unbelievable stuff um, and it just make our life so much better and so much nicer. Uh, so use them every chance you get. Um, let's see. So uh, save the date update. Movie day is Saturday, November 26th. We are, we are uh, summing through the movies. Um, Becca said yesterday that we will have an adult movie in one theater, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. 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 All the MLSs, and so what happens is, when somebody downloads the information on a listing, previously the information that's been out was pretty much to whoever downloaded that information to give to somebody, and it would have some little sideline that says listing provided by uh, Remax Concepts or something like that. They've changed the attribution rules, and so now they are asking that as part of that attribution that there be a contact. I will tell you that most companies that I have talked to have decided that that contact is the company. Mm -hmm. We as a company have decided that that contact is you. So your email address will be on every listing when it gets downloaded by anybody else. Okay, so thanks Shane for that. He, he pushed for that. And then, oh, Concepts cares. Where's where's Marie? There she is. <laughs> She's got something to say. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's been a hot minute since we've all been together, but I wanted to thank you for your support of our uh, first ever Concepts Cares Foundation golf tournament this summer. We raised just over eleven thousand dollars for the foundation after all of our expenses were paid. So thank you. We sold out and sponsorships and teams, which was like more than I could have ever hoped for. So appreciate your um, support for such a fun day. Um, we just closed out our school supply drive, but we haven't delivered yet. So if you um, were thinking, oh, maybe when I go to Target this weekend, I'll grab some things. You can still bring them in. We'll probably try to deliver in the next week or so. Um, Is there anything you're still needing more of? Or I think anything. Okay. Um, I know there's a bunch of stuff in Ink Me. It didn't appear in looking at the boxes that there was anything that was like drastically missing, but you know, crayon, Crayola crayons, colored pencils, um, Elmer's glue sticks, those are all, and boxes of tissues are always things that I know teachers need in their classrooms. So um, if you happen to see any of that stuff, I'm sure it's all clearance out for. Christmas. <laughs> but, um, we sure take a few of those things still um, before we deliver. So that and we have, um, I haven't even, we don't think we've even publicized it yet. We have a blood drive coming up in October. So for those of you that do your planned donations, if you haven't already given, if you want to hold out, it'll be October 19th, I believe. We'll be here at the Wednesday. We'll be here at the Windsor Heights office. So um, we have that coming up. And then of course, all of the fourth quarter fun that you'll get to hear from me about always. Um, Thanksgiving baskets, 
um, gift drive for the yes shelter that kind of so I won't plug those now because I will let you know about that. So, so, okay. Yes, Jenny. Do you have a date yet for the wrapping? It will for the wrapping part. I don't know for sure. Usually it's the we look at when Christmas is and it's usually the first part of that week before kids get off school. So um, I do know we'll be assembling giving baskets the Monday morning of Thanksgiving week. So other questions? Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Um, all your support. It means the world, the world to me. I also was in Quad Cities this week and met with them. And we are this this close to getting Concepts Cares up and going into the Quad Cities. So that's really exciting as well. Thank you all. So, and now, coming to the stage <laughs> to present Killers. Yeah. Did you say killers or pillars? Killers. 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 Yeah. And Monroe. It's nice to be back. I'm glad all you guys are here. Everybody join us online. Thank you. Yeah. We have everybody new. Did you go over anybody that's everybody's new here? Everybody not been to a breakfast before? I think we're all good. Uh, all right. um, well, before we get into this, I want to tell you that we are actually having this uh, done professionally. So we'll just kind of go glance over this today and only in a month or so I'll be able to do this again. Um, and we'll have this presentation with a little bit more illustration of artwork. Um, Hopefully it's more interesting at, at that time. But <laughs> in any event, boy, that got me really excited. Uh, as I was saying, we're going to do this again. And I'm hoping that the illustrations and stuff are a little bit more kind of, uh, yeah, a little more. But, but even still, it's been a few years since we've, we've covered this. And really, no matter where you're at in business, if you're one of the top agents in the market and you want to do more, this is the way you build your business. If you're starting, you still have to look at this from this angle, okay? And make no mistake about it, you know, you didn't, you're not just a career, you're not, this is definitely not just a job, you're an entrepreneur. You own your own business. So you have to understand where <laughs> your business is coming in from and being able to track the money going out versus the money coming in. That is the only way that you can make decisions on what is effective and what is not. What stuff we need to go deeper in and spend more money on to get a better result, and what stuff we should not spend money on. If we try, we fail, let's get rid of it and try something else. Does that make sense? This is what some of the best businesses, this is the model they use. Some of you that are already doing this at a high level, you're already doing this whether you're conscious of it or not. Okay? And if you're not, if you're not doing this, I'm hoping that this presentation just re <coughs> shapes the way you look at it from a different angle. And if you can look at it like this, hopefully you can grow, okay? So uh, first things first, and you'll hear me say this over and over and over if you haven't already, but really everything that we do comes down to building and maintaining relationships. If you think about it at its bare essence, whether you're working a networking event, you're at an open house, you're trying to market your sphere, you're trying to call yourself by owners, you're trying to get new bills off the ground. We're all networking, building, and maintaining relationships. Building relationships is a skill, but maintaining the relationship is a system. It takes systems, and that's what these pillars are designed to. All right. Let's, you got the, the thing? <laughs> I want you to visualize a Roman a structure, like the Forum, that has stood now for over 2,000 years. It's starting to get a little rickety, but 2,000 years it has stood, okay? Now, if you don't have enough pillars in place, market conditions can rock your business to the core. Now, what are market conditions? We're seeing them now, right? Raising rates, pandemics, huge lay layoffs, stuff that's uncontrollable, natural disaster. When you talk about fires and floods and how that affects goods and materials, raising gas prices affects how goods and materials are get getting to us. 
So you see construction prices go up, right? These are all things that are outside of our control, but they do affect our industry. And the same way when these things were built, they were built to last. They were built to withstand earthquakes. They were built to withstand rain. They were built to withstand those natural disasters that occur. And if you only have two pillars that's holding up the structure that is your business, then you are going to succumb to the market conditions that happen around you. If you take this and start building your business the way that I show you here, you will build a business that will be that will thrive in any market. Okay. So, in my opinion, the first pillar, if you're not doing anything yet, the first pillar you really need to build is your sphere of influence. These are the people that you surround yourself with and have built relationships with in your life. Now, I'm not going to go over each and every training on how to, you know, build these pillars. We have training on that, and we can will go through through that. We will go through each pillar and design and give you a blueprint of how to be successful within those those uh, uh, these uh, 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 pillars. Excuse me. And what you'll notice is that you're not even really in business if you don't have four. I mean, I would argue you're not. You're just kind of floating around hoping real estate deals and sales fall from the sky. Mm -hmm. And I was that way for a long time. So I know what that looks like. Four of them is the absolute minimum you need to have. I would highly recommend you have six to eight. Best real estate agents, the highest producing ones, have 14 or more. And I would bet that if you really started interviewing some agents and really looked at where their business comes from and how they track it, you'd find out a lot more. 20, maybe plus. Okay? Now, how do we grow? We either go deeper into our pillars so we're more effective or we add more. Right? Okay. So the sphere of influence to me is number one. Go go ahead and go back. Go ahead and go back. That, that slide. The sphere of influence to me that working my A clients, the ones that love me, that refer me business, that see me as a high character person, that see me as an influencer, that that I have really a good, strong foundation relationship with that they call me and say, Hey, my buddy Brad's buying a house, there's his number here. That is my A clients. We have a campaign of how to touch those A clients daily, monthly, quarterly, and a year long campaign. We set budgets on how to do, do this, and we track how much comes in, how much comes out. We have you know, our sphere of influence is broken up into two separate areas our A clients and then our B and C clients. Our B and C clients are a, they're outside of that inner core circle, right? Your acquaintances, your business contacts, things like that. We also have a campaign on how to touch them. We don't touch them quite as intimately as we do our A clients, but we do touch them with newsletters and we do invite them to networking events. We do do things to uh, to try to get them into our A client. Okay, so we have that that pillar. We also have networking events. These are things that not only that we go out to that represent our passions, whether it's your church, your schools, your soccer team, baby girls softball team, it don't matter, but we also have reverse networking events too where we invite clients to us. And not just our A clients, but we invite our B clients too, because as you'll find, invite 100 people to something, you might get 30 to show up, right? So we pull our money together, Jenny Farrell and I have done some things together. The, you know, working, you can drive down costs by getting together and having good events. We just recently did one, I think it was last month, with the Cubs, Cubs event. It was a pretty good turnout, right? We've done haunted Halloween parties together. We've done Santa parties together. We've done barbecues together. So um, this is reverse network events. We do them once a quarter. That's what we're trying to do. I think we're going to try to do that pause. Alliance event coming up in the spring of next year. You were just talking about that. Yeah, Marco. that would be very fun. Because a lot of people have dogs. They don't have kids. It seems like everything we do is pretty family-centric. When people don't have kids, well, you know, they have their pets. We're going to try to do something that touches that kind of core. So right there, I just have three 
three pillars. Everybody has social media. What's that social media look, look like? They have enough personal stuff, they have enough business stuff, there's enough of your actions in there as well that attract people that have like-minded things. Again, I won't go over training of every single pillar, but that's how you're looking at it. A lot of people, how about your online needs? You know, are you paying for them? Are you getting them organically? Do we have follow-up systems? You know, we're going to contact them this many times, this amount of days before they go into some kind of follow-up campaign. How aggressive is that follow-up campaign? I think Shane's is like uber aggressive, right? I mean, like uber aggressive. But <laughs> hey, it's, it's hard to argue with his, the results he gets. So talk with Shane if you want to see how aggressive that is. Then it starts to back up over time. And uh, I would say even a lender told me this, that he's got these people back almost a year later from the point of contact to the point of sale was a year later. So maybe a 12-month camp campaign, right? Um, geographically farming an area. Something you want to put your arms around an area. What does that look like? How? What's that campaign look like? Right? These are all trappings. These are all things you can set budgets on. This is all things that you can see money going in and money coming out from your efforts. Right? And the list, if you go back a slide, the list goes on and on and on. Estate sales, short sales, social media, BNC, new, new construction, your online presence, FISBOs, do you have an investor? An investor is a great way to smooth out some of the ups and downs of your commission months. Have an investor to buy six or eight homes off you here, you know? Um, of course, open houses. Uh, does anybody else have any others in, in their mind? Anybody else want to chime in on something that, that, they're, that they're doing? I think I have a pretty good list here. Relocation, RDOs, estate and trust sales, that those expires, lot sales, commercial, slash multifamily niche markets that you're in, um, builders, postcard campaigns, print ads, radios. I mean, those are all things that are trackable money you're spending and money that you're, you're, you're getting out. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, real quick, we had a question over here what B and C stands for. So at least you mentioned the A's, which is your top, your inner circle. The B's and the C's are still in your sphere of influence. They're definitely still worth touching and reaching out to, but maybe not investing in some of the high dollar um, gifts, items of value that you give. Yeah, your B and C's are more acquaintances that are, you know, maybe people that it, you just haven't quite <laughs> kept in touch with as, as well as you used to. You with, know, With the goal of, of making them become A's, right? Right, and I really believe that the bulk of your sphere, if you actually just wrote out everybody you knew, just forget about how you know them or what they are to you, but just went on. And, you know, every on average, everybody knows about 240 people, they say, right? But the bulk of those people are going to be B and C type people. We have core people. We have people that are in, if we're in, right? That's probably at most 20 people if you're starting this that you would consider love you that much they're just going to refer you business because of who you are as a person what type of agent you are does not matter at this point they value you as a person that's your a my mom's on my a right <laughs> but at 18 years old she was the only one that believed it. <laughs> you know that's the truth and my mom is sitting dozens of people who i was fortunate enough to meet i think my first listing was from my mom now i think about it. kelly beckham's was Street, 1996. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, you know, so and my mom gets the gifts of value that I send out. My mom gets the pumpkins that I hand deliver. I treat her like an A client. Your B and C's, however, let's say there's 200, 200 of them that are B and C's. I would isolate like 30 or 40 of them. If you think, God, man, I know if I just, like, we were tight at one point, right? I, I know this guy or this gal better than this. I just need to take them to lunch. I need to get them into the, the networking, the reverse networking thing. I need to make a better reach out to them. They should be A. They're not what they should be. They could be. With enough work and enough time, that relationship should be A. Does that make sense? That, yeah. Business people, business owners, attorneys. Yes. Uh, 
restaurant officer, restaurant owners, people yeah. own your dry cleaning, people that, you know, you go to sushi once every few weeks, you know? Um, these are people, yeah, you have to conversate every day. And listen, you can add value to them. Doing a lot of these pillars cross one another, right? Like networking events, when we talk about networking, we do want to go to graduation parties, and we do want to go to the, the, the weddings, right? We do want to go to those things. If you're in a um, some kind of group, I forget what they call them, but breakfast club, or you're, you're in you're in the Rotary. The, the Rotary Club, you know? These are all things. Ginny was in one for a while. I mean, you know, you got business out of it, right? Yes, I did. I mean, these are valuable things to go. These are networking events. But a lot of times, you do the reversing networking events. You're actually crossing into your A's and your and your your B's. Your social media, same thing. You're exposing yourself to your A's and B's and the public and everything like that. Yeah. So they do kind of cross. Um, but you can, if you're passionate, like Christian, you're passionate about cars, right? You should go out to, to those car shows and. You know, talk to a guy about the Camaro he built and talk about, you know, hey, I'm Christian with Remax and the real estate agent. And I love cars. Because what you're going to do is you're going to find yourself talking to other people that have the same passions, right? No matter what that is. Is it fitness? Is it sports? Is it beer? Do you like craft beer? <laughs> I've sold over 10 houses for sneakers. Yeah, yes. It's private. Yeah. Guy's got a, this guy pretty much has a room full of sneakers, like a bedroom. Yeah. Of sneakers. Like his kids are in bunk beds because one of them. <laughs> 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 his kids suffer. <laughs> uh, I you, but you know what I'm saying. And like Brett Fine is a he's a cigar guy. He gets a lot of business out of the cigar clubs. And whatever you're into, that's I don't care how quirky it is. There's a lot of other people that are into it. <laughs> you know, I knew one girl. She was in the birds. You know, she was like in the bowels. <laughs> like, you know, people actually have ducks and stuff that live with them. It's weird. <laughs> but it's weird, but people do. And you'll find a couple thousand people that are living with ducks. <laughs> right? So, I, I mean, whatever you're into, it's okay. That's what makes this world great. Maybe you're a tattoo person. You love tattoos. Go we'll around the tattoo stores and highlight what they do and what's special about them. And you'll find a community that that'll support you because of it, right? Maybe your feet, you know. So I, I know we're looking to do this right now. Sid and I, we really talked about okay, and we kind of identified, you know, Harold. If y'all met Harold, he's a fitness guy, right? I mean, go no, see him. It's <laughs> a whole way or two is fine. You know, there's something he can do to help people. Tell them, hey, this is what you can do to cut weight. This is what you can do. You know, go to five star nutrition people, and you know, certain things you can take that are healthy for your body, as well as I mean, it's a lot of stuff. Harold knows. Now, uh, you talk about Christian being a car person. We talk about Nick being a South Sider. How many gyms are on the South Side? And, uh, Jeff being a musician. And you know, there's just a lot of things that people. I think would relate to that and your social media is those things. So I'm getting off on a tangent on that, but that could be something in your social media that you can really showcase yourself and wrap yourself around like, like people. So short sales, I mean, you know, it's not as common anymore, but if you really want to do them, they're out there. There are people that need them. You know, back when Shane started, he really hammered this hard and had a system and was very successful do doing it. So. But there's all kinds of pillars. There's all kinds of them, all right? Even larger than this, when you talk about developments and things like things like, like, like that. So I want to kind of give you guys an example of a business that kind of adopts this, that we all know and love, we all use, and then a business that we used to know and love that we don't use anymore because they're not around anymore, and show you why you need to adopt something like this. And if you don't, what could happen to you, okay? So first, let's go to the person who didn't adopt, didn't adapt, right? Blockbuster. We all used to go to Blockbuster, right? Movie night. Think about how long ago that was. You would actually go rent a movie. Mm -hmm. And then have to bring it back. 
<laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. But if you were a great <laughs> citizen, you would have rewinded that thing, right? <laughs> right? That's a long time ago, but it really wasn't. But it seems like a long time ago. Um, and when you went in there, yeah, when you went in there, we had roadshow video. Remember roadshow, the past few years ago, roadshow video. They had a little CD, little CD corner. What was going on in there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know that was where the adults went. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It was, no, it was like the Western doors. Yeah, you know, <laughs> one of those deals. So it didn't have a lot of real way to spend your money. Like you went in there. At first, it was just you rented movies. There were VHS, and of course, they came out on DVD. By that time, they they had stuff for people with games. You could rent Nintendo games and Sega games, and I'm dating myself, but that probably. On. And then you could buy like him. You could buy like MMs and popcorn and have like yourself a movie night, right? But if you look at the ways that they're steered, you can come in and spend money, it was very limited, right? What happened was Redbox came out, market conditions, right? Market conditions came and happened. And that hurt them big time. Because how easy was it just to, instead of returning something like that, it was just easy to pop it in or mail it out, whatever it was. And get. Then Netflix. <laughs> Naturally. You know, the thing about it is, I'm pretty sure it's a true story, that Netflix actually approached Blockbuster about partnering with them. They didn't see the value mm -hmm. in people ordering something at the click of a button. And because Blockbuster had the inventory, they had the movies. It never would have been a Netflix. It would have been Blockbuster on demand. I think there's one Blockbuster left in the United States. It is more of novelty. Right? They did not adapt to the changing means, not figure out more creative ways for people to spend their money, which could have been all sorts of things, right? Sporting events to uh, Nostalgic movies to you know, brand new hit movies to video games to consoles, whatever, right? The even stuff. So let's look at the company, in my opinion, that we all use that does extremely well. Hy-V. We all go to Hy-V in some way, right? I mean, hy -Vee, I don't want to call them an evil empire because they're not. I love them. <laughs> but they have got squashed everybody. Dolls was in our market forever. Right? Had one in your saw, had one on floor I used to do all the time. They all 15 of their stores are gone. I be just quietly just swimming. Like just woke up one day and dolls was not breathing. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't even know they were going under. They've gone. Remember Albertson's trying to come into our market? That was quick. They thought they were gonna be expensive and from the West Coast. Gone. They they went as quick as they came, right? Now Fairway's been able to survive, but they they Ivy's kind of left them alone. Like they're like the butcher, small town, not open on Sundays. Like just let us do our little thing over here. We won't come here, <laughs> right? But where else is there to go? All these, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> believe it. All these have uh, a niche. Costco niche to go. Yeah, but. You look at High V, what High V has became. High V has adopted, has always had, well, I wouldn't say always. Not growing up, it was just a grocery store. But look what they've done over the years. They became a butcher. They became a pharmacist. They became a fast food place that you could grab quick and go. They're a balloon in Florence. They're a pharmacy. They're a wine and spirits. They're a caterer. They're a gas station. They got Starbucks in there. They got a bank in there. They got. Mm -hmm. Whatever, you, know, you buy behind the counter, your stamps and your cigarettes and stuff. Mm -hmm. They got the non food now, right? <laughs> uh, where you can buy shoes and clothes and, you know, even like a specialty tech, specialty corner, baby specialty yeah. corner, right? All these ways to come into high key and spend your money. And I bet you've really looked into it. There's probably three or four or five other things I'm on, you know, garden center. Garden center. They have a nail salon and a grind one. Nail salon. There you go. They got a fitness place next door yeah. on the floor one, a 24 hour fitness. Um, they got Walmart with <laughs> some of them. Yeah. So here we can just name three or four, but I bet you go even farther with that. 
And here's the thing about piping, if you notice it, it's like like the like the food, like the shoes and the clothing thing. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's a huge success. I don't know. But you'll notice they'll try stuff and then one day it's just gone. They know what the butcher did on Fluor Drop this quarter. They know what the deli did. They know what the floors did. They don't look at the store from a hole. You can't look at your business from a hole and say, well, I sold 80 homes this year, and I need get the next amount of dollars. You know that. Okay, where did your money go, and what was profitable? Right? You have a billboard out there bleeding $1,800 every two weeks, and you didn't get one call from it because you have no system to track it. Well, that's money that could be going somewhere else, and so it's working really well for you that would, does that make sense? Okay. So Hyphy has done this really, really, really well. And you notice they have started in Iowa, but they're in Minnesota. They're in all the way in Missouri, they're in Illinois. They're growing fast. So I want you guys to start shifting your mind. Start to figure out what pillars do you already have? What pillars do you want to have? then create systems for each pillar, pillar by pillar. Set budgets for yourself, pillar by pillar. I'm not gonna pick on Tammy, but I'll, let's go to her for a second. She's a big agent, let's go that way. And she sells a lot of new construction. But if she was looking to help grow her team, there's a lot of resales for Greenland. They've helped a lot of families, right? You could go into your resales. You could, you know, Blake, Connor, all they all have sphere. They all have people that know them, love them. How are we touching them? How do we have our feedback from our open houses? If they're not going to buy Greenland, can we put them some, somewhere else, right? We guys do networking events. How can we add pillars into Home Team Iowa that's more of a new construction to help Home Team Iowa have a bigger footprint across the greater Des Moines area? It's possible, even when you look at how many sellers you guys have, which is absolutely incredible, by the way. But it's possible. If you want it, you have to look at this. Because as we know, Tammy has been doing real estate for a long, long, long time. Uh, not that long. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm almost 29. <laughs> no, no, no. Since, you were born, since you were born, construction kind of comes and goes at times. You know, one minute it's really hot, and then what kind of levels out? And then we've also seen where it just kind of flatlined on us for four years. You know, and you just you don't want to just have new construction, even if that is the corner pillar that holds this thing up strong. You know, it can this year can crack. So if we have the resales, and we're staying in touch with the resales. If we're managing our sphere, we have tracking in our open houses. Of course, we're trying to push through Greenland, but if they end up buying something else, be the agent for that, right? We want that. There's so we want networking events that we're doing that bringing people in together, past clients, right? We have all these other things that we can do. Social media presence, you guys do a good job on your social media. How can we incorporate some of your passions outside of real estate to bring people with those passions around you to have a, a bond with you outside of that? Because so there's a lot of no, we do a lot of real estate stuff, right? Everybody sees it. What separates you is things that make you, you unique. Okay, so that's what you really want to wrap your arms. How can we, even someone that it's kind of the lesson of all this, even someone that sells much real estate as home team Iowa. Still can grow. And someone who's starting this from scratch, who's flying around by the seat of their pants, that's waiting for real estate to fall, sales to fall to the sky like manna from the heavens, aka me for the first eight years of my life. You can build this pillar, pillar. And someday, with enough effort and enough systems and enough tracking, you can help other people do the same thing and buy your life back. And that's where I'm at now. And, and, and you talked before, I think it's asking about adding pillars. One is don't try it too hard. No, 
I would identify your first four. If you're not doing this at all, identify the four you want to. Build them one at a time. Get into a group. So, like, when I look at my A clients real quick, we'll send them an item of value every month. We do two clients a year. We do, you know, we'll invite them to four networking events that we're doing in year. And we're trying to plant our seeds every day. We're trying to have phone conversations. We're trying to, butter, trying to plant 15 seeds at a day. And if you haven't seen that class, that's a class. And that's the reason why we're not diving into every pillar. Because it would it would be, you know, a two-day course to go through every one. But rest assured, we have, for the most part, blueprints on every single one of these pillars to help give you an idea of what to do. And you can follow that blueprint exactly and build the same thing that we built. Or you can just let it kind of give you the idea, you know, give you a foundation and then let your own creativity take, take over. You don't have to do it the exact same way. You just have to do it all way, right? Find your own, put your own personality and ideas on it. But if you do that, you'll have a measured success. And there's no, I mean, even your online leads, people in here that pay for online leads, right? How much money are you paying? Do you know how much came out of it? Do you know how many sales that you have? Not enough. Not enough. So that you have to look at that and you're going to say, okay, what is it? Does our follow-up suck? Does our response time suck? <clears throat> Do my agents suck? <laughs> I can't from the place back there. <laughs> I know you're awesome. Um, because you have to look at that, like, okay, can I tweak it? Can I, is there something needs to tweak? Do I need a follow-up system in place that immediately starts hammering them with useful information, valuable information, so they boomerang back? Um, hey, you're not caught in the lead, and you're not, our average response time is an hour later. Well, that that's not going to work. So, I mean, is that it? Or do we just say, no, we're doing all of these things. Purpose is not working. We're cutting it. We're not going to spend $36,000 a year to make $36,000. It's even more money. That's not a good idea. You want to spend thirty-six, forty-five thousand dollars a year because I made one hundred and fifty, or at least hundred, at least double it. But right, that's how you want to look at this. When we set our A, yeah, we'll probably spend in twelve thousand dollars a year. It gives a value, and that's the thing about having a tight group of people of your A group. You can really do some special things for them, right? The networking events, right? You spend twelve thousand dollars a year, three thousand dollars in a bit. These are budgets you're going to set. Now I know not everybody in the room is going to look at this. Well, okay, man, you just laid out an eight thousand dollar year budget for me. I, I can't do that. I, I I get that, but you can set some. But you can spend four to six grand on your clients a year. You can do open houses and have a follow up campaign. That's more roll up your sleeves kind of work. You know, you can do these things. You can do these things on a shoestring budget, and as you start to grow, you can allocate more money towards your budgets every year. Okay? I know because I did it. All right? I started with my sphere. Once I started making enough money, I started investing in the leads. I started making more money. I started doing networking events. I started making more money. We started... Doing, just doing more and more things, right? So, geographically, the, ge the geo farming things, the one thing we have a ton of ideas for, but we don't actually have them. So, we'll, we'll work on that. Okay, so everybody wants to try to. Networking events is a really great way to kind of offset costs is to partner with your lender, a home inspector, something like that. So, people can have to bear the entire group. And they're, right. they're happy to win. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. And another agent. Like, no one's as close to Ginny and I as far as, like, not only friendship-wise, but where we come from. There's people that'll come to her event that I know, and vice versa. I mean, don't give a shit. But the chances are that you guys are like me, me and Ginny and I are probably not that case. Like, so, uh, for instance, if Kelsey's team did something with um, Stacia's team. You guys could have an event and everybody coming for their team and coming from your team, they don't even know each other. Like, there's no crossover. 
doesn't matter. But what you did was you drove down the cost of expense, right? The Santa event, you guys went into my Santa, the food's half the cost, photographers half the cost. You see what I'm saying? Right? We've done that, and Brian York's jumped on that. Yeah. Great events. That's some great events. Yeah. And it cuts down the workload too. Because what I mean by the workload is I get stressed out. I don't mean to interrupt, but no. when Continue. you have these events and nobody knows each other, then you're the person that has to talk to everybody. But if there's more of you that can mingle, I get stressed out if I have to talk to too many people. So when you partner up with somebody, there's more people that can handle the mingling part of it. Yeah. That makes sense. I didn't interrupt, but no, I, I appreciate think we've had some success flowers together. Absolutely. So. But then it also goes back, that's why these things kind of like they intertwine with one point or another. Just once you're done with the networking event, now it comes to working your database, now it comes to planning your seats. You write handwritten letters to people that came through. Mark, thanks for coming to our Halloween event. Now think about this for a second. I held the Halloween event. We fed their kids candy, we gave their kids a thrill, we had gave them alcohol, and I'm writing them the letter thing down. Good kids <laughs> Yeah, I, get, I got their kids drunk. <laughs> so I got them. <laughs> but I'm writing them a letter thank you, Ben. And a lot of times they'll respond, like, why are you thanking me? I should be thanking you. You know, the parents and stuff that came from the iCups event, I spent two hours writing handwritten letters thanking them for coming to our event. It gives me a chance at the end of my letter to say, do you have anybody that has a real estate? Any warm introduction that you can make, I will be eternally grateful for. That's my little pitch to every single person that I talk to in the networking event, if I'm dropping by pumpkins, or we're just having a conversation. That's my closing parting. See you later. You know, the more you can hammer people with that, the better. And you can practice it in the mirror or whatever sounds comfortable to you, but that's what you have to do self top of mind awareness. We're building and maintaining relationships through all of this. Right? And this is how you build a structure that is scalable, saleable. Right here. That 2,000 years later, people still see it. It's up. Right? Does anybody have anything they want to add? I think we're going to wrap this up. I think you did something right. You okay. must have lived right. <laughs> I think you've done all right. You've probably done something like this, whether you knew it or not. I'm sure. I did. You didn't? I was like you for, for a long time. years. Yeah. Well, you just get by with that, I think, maybe, you know? You get by, like, you get by on your charm and charisma. It's a little, little different. Now, there's a lot more of us out there. No. You're just going to rely on your sphere. You're going to be this. And if you're just going to rely on online leads, you know there's an ebb and flow. It's going to go like this. If you're just going to do open houses and grind, it's going to be doing this. But if you can do a plethora of them, be like this. Your income. That's what I'm talking about. Your sales. Matt, I think you're done. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, I'm done. <laughs> now, we'll never be like this. Shepherd to it. We'll never be like this. That's not the life we chose. We didn't ch choose a, st a steady a pay paycheck. But it can be on a gradual incline, nice little bump right up, right? So we'll do this again once the presentation is done in full. I appreciate you guys coming. For those that came online, thank you. Uh, I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody here, everybody online, that you see a presentation like that and realize the depth of the information that is available to you as agents. <laughs> and that goes with with Shane, does you know, all those things. You have these opportunities and resources because of being with concepts. Umexe has got some fun things to talk to you about. Welcome him. Hi, everybody. I don't even know who's in business. I don't do much business anymore, but after listening to Matt, <laughs> Matt always pumps me up. And I will kind of make fun of him for one second, though. Normally, I'm uh, more dressed up than he is. So he, he uh, wore a jacket and wore some shoes. I wore my dad and I, uh, New Balances. So uh, I'm going to give Matt a new nickname. I hope it sticks. Uh, Soup Jacket Matt. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and, uh, but hey, dude, I need to borrow your jacket. Come on, I can't. Oh, you don't want it. You don't want it. Oh, there's the smell of Southside swagger. <laughs> <laughs> smells like sausage. Sausage. <laughs> Yeah, I totally don't want that. Um, speaking of smell, does anyone smell anything different? Not, not maybe in this room, but in, in Iowa, in Des Moines, maybe in the Quad Cities. You guys smell anything different? No one notice the cologne that my kids got me for my birthday? Doesn't it smell good outside? Doesn't the air smell fresh and crisp? It doesn't smell like corn dogs anymore. It doesn't <laughs> smell like funnel cakes. It smells like fall, right? Who smells fall? Who's, who smells pumpkin spice lattes around the corner? And so the, I'm here to pump you guys up, okay? I want you guys to know that summers are always slow. People chill out. They chillax. They go on summer vacations. They just want to be with their kids. And actually, sometimes you don't want to be with your kids, but your kids end up consuming, you know, eight hours of your day. Who feels, who, which fellow parents, I was talking to somebody earlier today, which fellow parents feel like you got eight hours of your life back while your kids are in school? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, two hands uh, back there. And so I want to remind you, historically, you know, Matt talked about this, right? Real estate is kind of like that too, right, guys? Winter time january 1st kind of starts slow but all of a sudden people are like oh new year's resolution i want to buy a house i'm my lease is up spring bam and then we hit like june like late may june memorial day and it starts to kind of slow down and all of a sudden it's like oh my gosh doom and gloom and then all these media people these uh specialists they write um these articles Market crashing. You guys better go find your uh, survival kits, right? Right? Who reads those? Who reads those uh, articles? Okay. So the thing I want to remind you guys is don't listen to them. I was at a um, a little uh, hangout happy hour with some of my developer buddies, and they're super smart. Second generation developers, or now the, the brothers are doing it together, and uh, one of the um, one of the uh, brothers said, so I asked him how he felt as a developer developing lots. He's like, damn, there's a really big meeting this week, who in Jackson Hole, and it's going to just really tell us what's going to happen with the market. And the Fed chairman, based on what he says, you know, we might have stagflation, we have another B session, we might have a G pressure, we might. He kind of scared the bejesus out of Boom Max A for about half a second. <laughs> I was like, dude, in my head, I was so polite, so nice, so my friend. I was like, I'm glad no one recorded you saying that. It scared the bejesus out of all of us as agents. You know, as a developer, I mean, he's one of the top, they're, they're some of the top, you know, three or four developers. So don't listen to that because there's always people that are going to make money off of fear, called fear mongering, right? So, what is real estate? During the pandemic, real estate was, anyone have the word? What was real estate? What is the government? No, well, booming for sure. Essential. Essential. Thank you. Is that Tanner? Awesome. So real estate was essential. And when you go to buy things, how many of you are buying things just because they they want to buy stuff? Okay. And then <laughs> how many people in here primarily buy things because they need to buy something? And what is real estate? They say they say real estate is a necessity, right? Everyone needs a roof over your head. Not because you need a roof over your head because you know, um, barely fit, and everyone's you know like uh, what's it, the Waltons, and everyone's you know four kids to one room. No, people need to buy a house because they need the right size, they need the downsize, they need a few school districts, they need uh, to get closer to where they want to be from a, a, a lifestyle standpoint. So I, I kind of made up this ratio, and you guys know I I, you know, I shouldn't out myself. But I make up a lot of things. A lot of times it's make it's I make it up based on common sense and r rationale. And just overall observations and statistics. So what I'm going to tell you is real estate is totally essential. It's definitely a, a need that everyone um, um, has. But 80% of real estate purchases I feel are based on the city. 20% are based on want. And hey, guess what? People that want to buy and have the have the money to buy, that's awesome too, right? We'll take a real estate buyer seller any way we can get it. So you know, 
So what I'm saying is some people go, oh, you're too positive, and there's got to be a, a, a dip or a whatever. Just think about that. So years were good in 2019, 2020, 2021. And, you know, so just if you're going to get worried, at least brace yourself for like 80% of what you did last few years. Is that a fair kind of analogy? Just for my, you know, half class empty type of friends. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember, homes make people happy. And um, some of the things I want to definitely give you those because I am so positive. I always want to make sure that you guys have faith over fear is when we have anxiety about our business, What's the number one thing we should do, guys? We should get busy, right? We should take some action. We should do some activities. Who in this room has my activity list that I created and I've updated for the last 10 years? Trisha, that's not what I mean. Mark Ryan, I think I've shared it with you. I better reshare that. Remind me that I better reshare my activity list. But I have pretty much a daily, weekly activity checklist of the things that you should be doing when you feel anxious about your business. And I'll just give you a quick sum since not everyone has seen it. Uh, two hours of prospect. Make the phone calls. I actually came up with a new game, guys. It's going to be on Amazon.com. Amazon.com. <laughs> but it's going to be on Amazon.com. <laughs> and um, I, it's a game. Because, hey, life is a game, especially when you play it well. And you guys are for sure, you know, that real estate is a game. So the new game is called the Contact Contract Game. And so who knows the difference between, I've said this a few times, a contact and a contract. What's the one difference? Money. <laughs> Money, no. Uh, it's, it's actually a, a super simpler con, uh, difference. The letter R. R. Thank you. And what does that letter R stand for, for my friends that have heard me that before? Relationships? Okay. So the contact <laughs> contract game on Amazon.com is playing with the letter R, having fun with the letter R. When you're going for a walk, you're driving your car, you're pulling your weeds, you're watching, uh, um, watching a, a game on silent, pick up the phone, go through 26 letters in the alphabet two weeks at a time, and call people that you haven't touched or talked to in a while. And it's not like, hey, um, Jody, I want to talk to you about real estate. I know you've been in your house for three months now, and I know I bet you, you know. Yeah, all the kids are getting bigger, so you probably need bigger room. <laughs> oh, come on, do that, right? That's gonna turn them off. What are we gonna do instead? I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call Stacia. Say, hey, Stacia, how you been? How you been? I haven't seen you for like 24 hours, uh, but I um, just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. And then I've said this before. The Fords, right? Um, talk about family. How's your family? How's your kids? How's your spouse? How's your mom? How's your dad? Talk about occupation. How's work going? I remember you told me you got a promotion. I remember you told me you're working on, um, you know, this project. Well, what are you up to for Labor Day weekend? Recreation is our recreation. Are you got any vacations planned? How's your golf game been? And then the the B is um, dreams. So Jason, what are you dreaming about? Are you dreaming about big, building a bigger uh, back part of the house for more shoes or for your garden. You've seen his lawn. He's got an awesome, awesome uh, lawn. And speaking of lawns, so back to this contact contract game. Um, you know, Matt talks about paying the seeds. That's one of the pillars of your sphere of influence. Um, I'm not a gardener, but Joy is, thankfully, and she grew some tomatoes. And what ha would happen to those tomatoes if tomato? My kids, you know, make fun of me. <laughs> Dad, it's not tomatoes, it's tomatoes. Okay, whatever. Get me fun of my kids uh, from today. But anyways, what would happen to Joy's tomatoes if she didn't water those tomatoes? They would die, right? And so what would happen with your contacts? I mean, hopefully they don't die because you don't call them. But what happens with your contacts from a relationship standpoint? If you don't water them, they're going to go to someone else as a real estate agent because that agent is touching them two to three times a month, making phone calls, seeing them face to face, doing some other things like that um, um, does with them. So the contract contact game on Amazon.com, and it's free, guys. I'm not charge anything for it. I'm actually going to pay you to play it. Um, is you know just keep those relationships fresh. Okay, so what happens to if what you say about the market, no stagflation, inflations in control, rates so rises, what happens if the market starts setting down? Who was in business in 2008, 2009, 2010 with me? We're still here, right? We're still alive and kicking. Look at this guy, bouncing on one leg. That's how much I was alive and kicking. And so what's going to happen? What are we going to do with the market? Great agents that you all are, because I got my money on all of you guys. What's going to happen on the market if the market slows down? 
we're going to say grow. that grow. We're gonna you, you got my um the, the finality of my statement. Uh, we're gonna pivot, we're gonna adapt, we're gonna adjust, and we're gonna not just grow, but guess what? We're gonna gain market share because we know that back to my 80-20 ratio, we know that 80% of the agents only do 20% of the business. So those 80% of 2,000, 3,000 agents in the market might unfortunately for them might not make it. And so we're gonna gain market share, right? Us, because we're all in the 20%, the whole company. We're in the top 20% that's doing that 80% market share. But if the market flattens out and you know, people aren't prepared for that, like most agents not concept. I don't want to say it that way, I want to reverse that, I don't want to say that at all. But we're gonna gain market share. Okay, so I want you guys to pivot, gain market share, buy. So we gotta work, right? So we gotta outwork everybody still, just like you guys do every day. Plant your seeds, grind, prospect, network, all that stuff. Then we gotta out market that we are in a service industry, but we need to continue our, by being able to service people, we need to market. So everything you think about it from a marketing standpoint, how can I be top of mind, Toma, with the people that I need to be in front of? And then also what we're gonna do is we're gonna help think things. And people might say, oh yeah, well, what are you gonna do when all these you know, flat fee brokerages or these flat fee agents just scoop up the market, right? Then gonna come in and blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna say, you know what? Shame on me if I let a cheaper competitor take my business. What am I gonna do to offset their low fees? I'm gonna outthink them, outsmart them, outmarket them by showing them my value. My value of, hey, I'm gonna show you this full blown elaborate market analysis and this 84 point marketing plan. I'm gonna just do so many things to help you achieve your real estate need. Hey guys, so I got some blueisms. Um, we wanted to get you guys out. Uh, before 11 for sure so i got some uh, more things i want to talk about uh fluisms I'll, I'll post this somewhere you know you guys follow me on facebook i'm always writing things these are um things i want you guys to kind of wake up and remember so action i said earlier over anxiety gratitude gets you going every day people when you wake up sometimes you know i wake up in the middle of the night and i read an article that the reason why i wake up in the middle of the night it's my the core is all the stress, and then because because of the stress, it creates adrenaline, right? But then what do I do? I do some reflecting, I do some journaling, and I definitely do my gratitude journal, right? So gratitude every day is going to get you going because if we're not grateful for what we have, it's going to go away before we know it. Okay, so gratitude gets you going every day. Oh, this is a funny one. I'm going to actually go well, that testimonials over trauma. We all have trauma past our past life, right? And they're testimonials, right? There are trials and testimonials. So not just get, uh, not just, you know, show that, yeah, I survived this and that's my testimonial. No, get testimonials from your past clients and get them to give you a five-star review on Zillow and Google. And this is the one that I want everyone to help me with. Woohoo over worry. That's a, that's a new one I just made up. Woohoo over worry. And I'll get excited about saying that. I'm gonna make you say that. I'll count three, one, two, three. Woohoo over worry. All right. Reflections over remorse. Do it over depression. Uh, oh, I scratched that one out. I didn't like that one, so rewind that one too. Do it over doubts, right? Mm -hmm. So every day I know, because it comes into my head every single day, doubt enters your head, fear enters your head, kick its butt, right? Do things to get it out of your head. It happens, right? We all have this fear. We all have this doubt. But it takes just as much time and energy to have faith and optimism as it does to have fear and doubt. Okay? And um, when the week, and this is actually something I borrowed from uh, Brian Buffini. I have a friend that works there. I'm like, hey, you know what? I'll change my name to Buffini if you guys, you know, <laughs> come talk to us for free. But when the week, what's that mean, guys? Back to um, just like feeling shameful and guilty. Oh, this whole day I didn't get a chance to do something because my day turned upside down because I had to do this, this. Then all of a sudden it's Thursday, right? All I want you guys to think about is win the week. What's that mean? Win four days out of three days. Even more than that, win the day. What's that mean? If there's 15 waking hours and you wanted to work for eight and you uh, kick butt for five of the eight hours, you won the day, right? That's all that matters. Don't worry about the past. Don't think about what you could have, should have done. Who cares? That's gone. Win the week, win the day. Okay? Um, I'm almost done, guys. We're going to have some time, a few minutes for networking and socializing. Um, find yourself an accountability partner and just make sure that you're always going with the flow. Be in harmony with your life 
be in harmony with the market. We remember that there's going to be ebbs and flows and seasons in all of our lives and all of our businesses. So what we got to do is just be in the flow, right? And don't make this business about money. Please, guys, do not make this business. Oh, I need to make more money. I need to, you know, do this for money. Don't get me wrong. We all need money, right? We all need money. Money buys peace and happiness, freedom. But before money, though, we'll get, and this is, I got these quotes, um, this quote from, I think, Jim, Jim Rohn or Zig Ziller, Ziegler. We will get everything we want in life. Maybe that's money, maybe that's peace, joy, happiness, freedom, by giving everybody else that um, we get the pleasure of serving what they want. Does that make sense? You guys all have seen that quote, right? Yeah. So you'll get everything in Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn, thank you. We'll get, you will get everything in life that you want by giving everybody else that you know that comes to you for a real estate need, for a friendly help, piece of advice. For, uh, for just a quick talk or a chat, we get everything in life by being there for other people, other other people's other people. Okay, so um, I think guys, that's all I have. Unless you guys want me, I cross out a few other things, but I just close um, my part with get your pumpkin spice ready. <laughs> if you want me to buy one. But you know, I'll meet you. You know, honestly, it's hurt my feelings a little bit. I'm like, hey, who wants to go to lunch with me? Who wants to have coffee? See, some people do. But uh, I do. I I got Lance's card all day long. So much like swipe. Uh, I want to see. You. I want to love on, pump you up. You sure? It's card thing. Wait, wait, earlier. Really? I'm, I'm in. Oh, <laughs> man. And, and, hey, it's a win-win because Lance gets the points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you guys didn't know this. I have a nickname for Lance. It's called Lance Flu or Lance Pants. Lance Flu. Yeah. like that. That's all I got. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. We get a lot of stuff to think about. Think about this. The market's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. We're going to be here. We will help with anything that you need. Okay. With that, I want to thank you. We all want to thank you for coming, taking time out of your day to come and visit, learn, set together, socialize. It's extremely important to us as as the, the leaders of this company that you do take this time, that you allow us to try to help. That's what we're here for. Use us. Use the training. Use our systems. Use our, our partners in business use the the brokers and, and directors of the company. Use us. That's what we're here for. Call. I answer if you call. True. I answer if you call. You need something, I'll pick up the phone. We'll figure it out. But with that, I just want you all to know, all of you out there on online saying hi to you, uh, we appreciate you. Go out there and kick some butt. Thank you. Hey, real quick. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We forgot. Right. So, I got everyone on the, the done it. <laughs> uh, so, I'm just going to pick someone. And it's Cameron uh, Campos. Oh, oh. <laughs> the big planner. Yay. Good job. Thank you all. Thank you all. I <laughs> It's going to be my next time. Next time, 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 Okay. Is that for good luck or? Uh, 
the situation her opinion, and I think she got some of those from the moderation. She didn't say that, but I think Okay, thank you. And then, lo and behold, Lance Anderson gets involved. And now it magically works. What is that? Lance hoping to get So, yeah, and, and he brought the great 
I was taking that conversation. But because of you, I have a lot of faith to say that it's a magical power when Lance got it just to cover Ted's ass. That's why it's true. And he put a great place like, wait a minute, there's no warranty company in the world that gives a shit about me for taking thousands of dollars just to cover my ass. They don't care. They don't even know me. You know? It's like, so, yeah, she just gets everything. She has a very well, she claims they did. She claims they tried over and over again to try to get the They spent all the time to get the warranty approved. Well, they said it was predated that one. I didn't have any. And you can do I had a good list of approved and paid for a great warranty, and it was transferred to the buyer on the day of the That's my job. I got no insight into it. It has nothing to do with this. So we'll see. I'm talk to Sydney. She is the Zemar IR staff. She was there. She never spoke up, although she said it a couple times. But she's she's doing so many great things. She was a hundred and she was there for the deliberation. Sometimes the best thing is to well, I think so. I hope so. One time we had to take breaks. She still walked away. So I hope that they don't get caught up in the heartstrings. Oh, I just clicked on it. I can't believe it. And like, you have no dogs. She was disparaging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she, she, she was disparaging the insinuation. Like she didn't come right out and say Lance is a, is an asshole. Okay. She insinuated that there was something nefarious. And, and, and my life is being an asshole and doing nefarious. I mean, that's, that's what I mean. Right. 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 But you know, it's right. But like, you know how you can trust me. She presented, I had the opportunity to cross the table. They did. I'm like, no, I just wanted to do one presentation. So where are you my presentation. And then she says, oh, yeah, I got, I just got, I got a whole lot of I got, I got. I got her. So, but she got to take a break. So, break came back. She, and then she starts. So she would ask me a question that would be laced with accusations. So, so when we try to address that. I would start to start making more. Right. So then you Well, so it's definitely something from Iowa City. She jumped into tried to stop. She tried to control. She, she, she just kept cutting me off. And she's like, well, you're diverting. No, I mean, I'm trying to get an answer that you just don't like. But I'm not I'm trying to answer your question. He's talking about She did. And eventually, we got to the point. Well, then she, she brought up like a, a the number. Are you aware of this language? Who brought that? Uh, um, and it's kind of the to bring up the methods. Are you aware? And so, yeah, God, this is not appropriate. We need to ask questions. Testimony is not great. We all, we're all aware of that. But do we have It was. So, to your point, uh, my hope is she kind of dug her own grave oh, yeah. with her demeanor, yeah. her just the way she's she, 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 she